Level 1. This is Post Malone, the world famous hip hop pop star turned country singer, and this is Post Malone's grocery getter. It's a Bugatti Chiron, and it's far from the only luxury vehicle he owns. Post also owns a Rolls Royce Phantom, a Lamborghini Aventador SV, a McLaren S20S Spider, and maybe another Rolls Royce, the Wraith. In 2017, Rolling Stone reported that he had one, but three years later, GQ didn't include it. I don't know, maybe he traded it or sold it on Facebook Marketplace or something. The point is, Post Malone likes expensive things, which means he needs security to protect those expensive things, and holy cow, does he ever have that figured out. This is a preview of level 70, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole other side to Post Malone that nobody talks about, and this video is going to get into all of it, from least to most surprising. Don't jump to conclusions, good or bad, on this next one, but Post Malone was once called the Donald Trump of hip hop. Michael Wood of the LA Times popularized that in 2016, and even though it seems like a compliment, both men broke into an arena by doing things their own way, maybe? It was a little backhanded. The person who actually said it was a record label executive who added, quote, things that should have killed his career have only made him bigger. Well, that's not great. But if you stay through level 100, you're gonna learn about the one big ugly thing that Post Malone survived. I feel a little bad bringing it up. Just a little. Level 20. Does Post Malone like Donald Trump? No, no he does not. Talking to Rolling Stone in 2017, he said, quote, we have a shitty thing going on in the White House. I don't like Trump, but I don't think it's just him. Something's coming. The context of that quote paints a picture of a man who's really frustrated with all sides of government and all political parties. He's not likely to stump for Biden either. Comment below if you kind of agree with what he's feeling. Level 30. A very sensitive explanation for Post Malone's face tattoos, and pictures of his $3 million home in Utah are next, but level 30 pertains to his preferred vice. Post Malone drinks a lot. I linked to a really good 2020 interview in GQ that details all of it. During the piece, he talks about sipping codeine and alludes to having done heavier drugs. He doesn't smoke weed, however. At least he doesn't do it any longer. He kind of OD'd on it one time and says he really hasn't gotten past the anxiety it caused. Level 40. Post Malone has tattoos of celebrities like Johnny Cash and Kurt Cobain. Words like always tired on his face, barbed wire, skeletons, numbers, Travis Kelsey's signature. I want to focus on just one before explaining why he has so many tattoos. I mean, keep in mind that a decade ago he had none, and now there are like 70 of them. On the side of Post Sandy, he has a picture of President John F. Kennedy because, quote, he was the only president to speak out against the crazy corruption stuff that's going on in our government nowadays. Remember that. It's important. As for the overall body of work, he told GQ it comes from a place of insecurity, and it's here I think we get a glimpse into the real personality of Post Malone. Quote, to where I don't like how I look, so I'm going to put something cool on there so I can look at myself and say, you look cool, kid. Level 50. Soon after getting rich, Post Malone bought this piece of property near Salt Lake City, Utah. He referred to it as his bunker, which is important because Post is definitely preparing for a major society changing event. He may even be a prepper, but he does it in style. Just gonna flash through pictures of this five bedroom, six bathroom, seven acre property. Talking to Rolling Stone, he said, quote, I'm building it underground. It's going to be fun until the world ends. 12,000 square feet, including a professional gaming room, a massive kitchen, a master bedroom, gym, art, stunning views of the mountains. I'm not gonna lie. That kind of place would cost two to three times as much in Nashville or Los Angeles. Talking to Montreality, he said, move somewhere. Because whenever martial law is declared, or whenever the credit cards fail, whenever your cards fail, whenever your banks fail and you can't use your card anymore, you have three days to get out of where you are because that's when they're coming for you. That's the big move, that's checkmate right there. There's also something about building a tower so you can see them coming. I mean, it's all pretty intense. Level 60. Post Malone believes in God, but maybe not religion. I'm not gonna lie. During separate interviews with Mix Mag and Rolling Stone, he sounded like a guy who's kind of trying to figure it out in real time. I mean, we all go through that, right? He once said that no matter what you believe, he believes that there's something really amazing watching over us. But in 2017, he said, quote, I used to be super religious. I believed in God, but now I see through it. 
I think he's actually talking about what he later described as the excesses of religion. Quote, God doesn't care that your church has an effing gold roof, he says. Level 70. He does believe in guns. Lots of guns. Here is a photo gallery of the weapons that he's shown off. An M14 that the Navy SEALs use. A Walther PPK, which is James Bond's gun. A 44 Desert Eagle and an M1 911 pistol plus two gold-plated Glocks that he never shoots. There's also a Cobalt AR-15 assault rifle. In the bedroom of his home, there was a pump-action Mossberg shotgun, an FN 5.7 pistol with a laser sighting, and a Glock 19 that at the time, he reserved for his girlfriend's use, should she need it. Why does he have all this weaponry? Level 80. He's not entirely convinced that the end of times is not near. Post Malone is an admitted subscriber to alternate news and conspiracy shit. Among his confessions is that he's had multiple UFO sightings throughout his life, ghosts are real, there's a gun that gives you a heart attack, and the weather is being controlled by... I mean, listen, that Joe Rogan podcast interview is like four hours long, and who has time for all of that? But he's not afraid to question conventional news and narratives, which leads us to... Level 90. Biggest lie, yeah, it would have to be the f***ing U.S. government, actually. Ooh. Post longs for a time when it was about the people and freedom, but says now it's a reality show. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of weird shit that happens within our lifetime and within our generation that that really changes the, the way of the world. He doesn't really give details, and he encourages everyone to build a bunker in Utah if they can. If you learned something new during this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe, and also look out for similar videos for Kid Rock and Jelly Roll. I'd also love if you suggested an artist that we should tackle next in the comment section below. Level 100. I hate this one because of cancel culture, but the biggest thing that could have killed Post Malone's career was a teenage video where he was caught using the N-word in a way real similar to how Morgan Wallen used it. Of course, that's his duet partner on I Had Some Help. He apologized for it, but it still dogs him today. I'm not really someone who cries about cancel culture, but I know I wouldn't want to be judged for a lifetime for some of the stupid things that I did growing up south of Detroit. If you enjoyed this video, I dropped a link to another one that I think you'll enjoy right here, and YouTube selected a video they think you'll like here. I'm Billy Dukes for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing. Mm -hmm.